Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Tragic Death of Queen Victoria's Children Queen Victoria and her husband, Prince Albert, had nine children, five girls and four boys. There were 17 years between the oldest and the youngest, and each of the children had their own qualities and different personalities. But Queen Victoria's life would be rocked a number of times throughout her life, and in particular following the death of her husband, Prince Albert, who was in his 40s. She would never be the same. She would spend her days in mourning clothes, and she would even have her husband's bedroom made up each day, as if he was still alive. But there was another significant number of heartbreaks that the Queen of Britain and the Empress of India had to deal with. She would, throughout her life, have to deal with the deaths of her children, and there were three that died before the aged Queen and she was rocked by these. But what is the story of the tragic death of Queen Victoria's children? Prince Alice was the third child and the second daughter of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, and she would be the first of Queen Victoria's children to die. Alice spent a large amount of her childhood with her parents and her siblings in different royal residences, and she was given a brilliant education. She was also skilled in practical subjects and activities. However, when her father became very ill in the December of 1861, Alice would nurse Albert until the day he died. She was close with her parents, and following her father's death, she would serve for six months as Queen Victoria's secretary. She did marry a a minor German prince, uh, Louis of Hesse, and their wedding took place at Osborne House and the Queen remarked that it was more of a funeral than a wedding. But Alice, who was then living in Germany, was rather unhappy, and she began to have fractious relations with her mother. But she was a woman who was very interested in nursing and the work of Florence Nightingale, and when Hess became involved in the Austro-Prussian War, Alice was at the time pregnant, and she devoted a lot of her time to helping manage the field hospitals. But Queen Victoria did not like this, and she was worried about Alice's work in medicine and the fact that a princess of Britain was doing this sort of work. But in 1877, Alice became the Grand Duchess, and tragedy would hit her in the years before. Her youngest son died in 1873, falling from a window, and following this, Alice never recovered. Queen Victoria at the time wasn't too focused on her daughter's well-being, But Alice, then following her son's death, devoted more time to her children. She resumed public duties, but her relationship with her husband had become strained. She travelled to England in 1876, so she was treated for a complaint caused by a backward curvature of the womb, and she stayed at Balmoral to recover. She wrote to her husband back home, complaining, saying, I longed for real companionship. For apart from that life had nothing to offer me in Damstadt, so naturally I am bitterly disappointed with myself when I look back, and see that in spite of my great ambitions, good intentions and real effort, my hopes have nevertheless been completely shipwrecked. You say, darling, that you would never have caused me hardship intentionally. I only regret the lack of any intention or desire, or rather insight, to be more to me and that does not mean spending all of your time with me, without wishing to share anything with me at the same time. But I am wrong to talk of these things. Your letters are so dear and kind, but so empty and bare. I feel myself through them that I have less to say to you than any other person. Rain, fine weather, things that have happened. This is all I have to tell you about. So utterly cut off is my real self, my innermost life. From yours, I have tried again and again to talk to you about serious things when I felt the need to do so, but we never met each other. We have developed separately, and this is why I feel true companionship is an impossibility for us, because our thoughts will never meet. I love you too so very much, my darling husband, and that is why it's so sad to feel that our life is nevertheless so incomplete, but you are never intentionally to blame for this. I never think that, never. But in the November of 1878, the household became ill with diphtheria. Alice's eldest daughter was the first to get ill, and the disease then spread to the other children before her husband caught it. 
Alice was called to her daughter Marie's bedside, and she choked to death. Alice was completely distraught, and she kept the news of her daughter's death a secret, but she would also get very ill from the disease that she caught from her son. Her final words were, Dear Papa, and on the 14th of December, 1878, at 2.30am, she lost consciousness and died six hours later. She was the first of Queen Victoria's children to die, and Victoria would outlive her by more than 20 years. The Queen noted, This terrible day came round again, my precious child who stood by me and upheld me 17 years ago on the same day taken, and by such an awful and fearful disease. She had darling papa's nature, and must of his self-sacrificing character, and fearless and entire devotion to duty. She was just 35 when she died. The next to die would be the youngest son, and eighth child of Victoria and Albert, Prince Leopold, was created the Duke of Albany, Earl of Clarence and Baron Arklow. He was highly educated and was considered very intelligent, and he would go to Oxford University. However, it became clear that from a very early age he suffered from the disease haemophilia, and that he was very delicate. There was some debate as to whether he also had a form of mild epilepsy. He would not be able to pursue a military career because of his illness, and he was forced to avoid even minor injury as he could have bled out and died. Prince Leopold was at times coddled by his mother Victoria, and she wanted to keep him at home to prevent any injury. Due to his haemophilia, he had trouble finding a wife, and Victoria, following a number of failed possibilities, suggested he met with Princess Helen Fredicia, the daughter of the reigning Prince of Waldeck Piermont. The pair married at St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle, and they had a happy but short marriage. Leopold would not live to see the birth of his son. He had in the past gone to Europe to consult with other doctors, and he went to Cannes to see a doctor about his joint pain. His wife, who was pregnant, begged him not to go, but he wouldn't return. On the 27th of March, 1884, Leopold, whilst in Cannes, slipped and fell, and he injured his knee and then hit his head. In the early hours of the next morning, he would get a cerebral haemorrhage, and he was then repatriated back to Britain, where he was buried in the royal vault. He died six years after his older sister Alice, but he was only 30 when he died. Queen Victoria wrote of his death, Another awful blow has fallen upon me and all of us today. My beloved Leopold, the bright, clever son, who had so many times recovered from such fearful illness and from various small accidents, has been taken from us. To lose another dear child, far from me, and one who was so gifted, such a help to me. It is too dreadful. Alfred, the Duke of Saxe-Coburg, and second son of Victoria, would then die shortly before his mother. He was a brilliant officer in the Royal Navy, and he was a skilled military commander and man. He would later become the Duke of Edinburgh, and he would marry Grand Duchess Maria of Russia, the second daughter of Emperor Alexander II. Alfred later became the Duke of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha, and he was a man who was a heavy smoker. But on the 30th of July 1900, inside a lodge, he was taken very ill, and he died of throat cancer. His death would come shortly before his mother, who would die six months later, and she would dedicate a Celtic cross to him in the grounds of Balmoral that she did get to see made before she died. These three children of Queen Victoria tragically died before the long reigning Queen of Britain did. Victoria succumbed to a period of illness where she had a number of strokes on the 22nd of January 1901. In her final months, she was aware that her eldest child, Vicky, the Princess Royal and German Empress, was very ill. She had been suffering for a number of years with an inoperable breast cancer, and Vicky was forced to stay in bed for long periods. The cancer by the autumn of 1900 had spread to her spine, and following her mother's death, the new king would visit his terminally ill sister in her final days. But Queen Victoria did not get to send her final farewell to her daughter, who was at the time very ill. Thank you for watching, and as a support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.